everyone to our service this evening for Ash Wednesday. Um, if I haven't met you before, my name is Madeline Albert and I've just started helping out Eleanor in the parish. Um, so this is my first service here. It's really lovely to be here with you as we begin um, reflecting and preparing uh, to uh, follow Christ in these 40 days of Lent. As part of our service this evening, there'll be the opportunity to receive the sign of the cross in ash. If you'd like to do that at the right moment, which will be after Hannah has received it, please do come forward um, one by one or in form an orderly queue um, to take part in that part of the service. But if you'd rather not, please don't worry. And we'll do the same um, when we're receiving communion. Please do come forward um, and we'll receive communion here. Let's just have a moment of quiet before we begin. We remain standing to sing our first hymn, which is hymn 121, 40 days and 40 nights. Since early days, Christians have observed with great devotion the time of our Lord's Passion and Resurrection, and prepared for this by a season of penitence and fasting. By carefully keeping these days, 
Christians take to heart the call to repentance and the assurance of forgiveness proclaimed in the Gospel. And so to grow in faith and in devotion to our Lord. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Church, to the observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. Holy Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy. Please sit. Let us pray for grace to keep God to keep Lent faithfully. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please remain seated for our first reading. The reading is from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For the Lord says, At an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on the day of salvation I have helped you. See now is the acceptable time. See now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God we have commanded ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, Beatings, imprisonments, riots, labours, sleepless nights, hunger. By purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left. In honour and dishonour, in ill repute, and good repute. We are treated as impostors, and yet are true, as unknown, and yet are all well known, as dying and see, we are alive, as punished, and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. This is the word of the Lord. And see to God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord is a great God. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. 
Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And once again he bent down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing beside him. Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, sir. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way, and from now on, do not sin again. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yesterday, um, I know some of you attended, but yesterday we had our Flipping Marvellous pancake party in church. Uh, flipping Marvellous it was, so thank you to everyone who was involved. It was wonderful. Um, I was in charge of one of the crafts. We were making Lent cubes, the little cubes that had things written on them. Either, you know, I am going to give up X, Y, Z, or a promise to God, or... Uh, be kind, a reminder of something that you can take up or give up in Lent. That's a good thing to do. I talked to each of the children who were kind of coming to the table and doing the craft. Uh, some were more interested in the sparkly bits and sticky shapes, but that is to be expected. Um, but lots of children really, really took in what the point of Lent was. They really did, from the activities that they had done on the way around. One little boy in particular drew Jesus on one of the faces of his lead cubes. He drew him surrounded by bare trees and brown earth. I drew Jesus in the desert, he said, because that's where he went to think about stuff before he died. Um, true enough, and I couldn't have put it better. Towards the end of the afternoon, uh, one child was really concentrating on their cube. They were really focused, making sure every bit of colour was in the lines. There was just absolute focus going on. Eventually, at the end, they showed me their finished work. They'd written the usual what other kids had written, kind of be kind, give up chocolate, um, of course, valid things. But on one side, it said, go away from bad things. They told me that that meant, if you go away from when you feel like you want to do bad things, you will be better and good, and that's what Jesus wants. should have asked that child if they were free this evening. They could have just preached for me, couldn't they? Go 
away from bad things. That's essentially a paraphrase of the words that we are going to hear when we receive our ash cross. Turn away from sin. Turn away from sin is what we will hear when the cross is laid on our foreheads. That's exactly what that child was talking about. See the moments of potential sin or badness and go away from it. Turn away. Stop ourselves from engaging in sin and instead do good. Now to turn away from sin does not mean to turn our back on sins we see. That in itself can, I think, be sinful. We're not being told to ignore sin, particularly, I think, in terms of what we see in a larger scale, institutional sins, sins that we see across the world. If we witness an abuse of power, I think it's our duty to call it out. We are, as Christians, called to live Christ-like lives, called to live lives that are good. And if we ignore these large-scale atrocities, if we allow things to go unchallenged, then I don't think we are doing this. But turn away from sin does not mean turn a blind eye. Jesus called people out. He challenged authority and he criticised unjust leadership. We too have a responsibility to do those things. But I do think there is a balancing act to be held here. The Gospel reading we heard just now tells us that those gathered were ready to do what the law commanded. They were ready to take up stones against the woman who had sinned. They certainly weren't turning away from the sin of that woman. They were focused on it, ready to act in response to her feelings. But Jesus challenges this in words that are familiar to many of us, words that have become well used. Let those without sin cast the first stone. And no one does. One by one, beginning with the elders, they leave. They know that not one of them is in the position to throw a stone because they know that they too have sinned, they too have done wrong. And so it seems to me that there are two things held in tension here. There's the importance of not turning away from and witnessing, calling out large-scale skins, large-scale sins, and our own sins, lest we judge others harshly, lest we throw stones when we ourselves are flawed. We cannot sit in judgment of those around us, you know, well, he did this, she did that, and criticise the behaviours when we too ignore the fact that we make mistakes. We too sin. So those words, turn away from sin. These words, I think, mean that we are to turn away uh, from our own sin, but turn away before it happens. Turn away from the things that tempt us, turn away from potential wrongdoings and hurtful acts. Go away from the bad things, you'll be better and good, and that's what Jesus wants. The words from that child seem to me the best advice I can give and can hold on to this Ash Wednesday, this Lent and beyond. It may have been said in different words, but Essentially, it's turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. And the being faithful to Christ part of that sentence is so important. I think being faithful to Christ means living out our duty as Christians, our duty to be good people, our duty to work on ourselves and to grow and become better. That duty calls us to challenge unjust structures, to love our neighbours. Being faithful to Christ means spending time looking at ourselves, how we interact with others, what we do and why we do it. And it means sharing with others that incredible, overwhelming love of God and of his Son, 
Jesus Christ. The love of God in his son Jesus shows itself in the last line of the gospel passage. Neither do I condemn you. Go your way and from now on do not sin again. Jesus loves and Jesus forgives. He forgave that woman, he forgives us. In the season of Lent, we prepare to remember Christ's sacrifice on the cross, the sacrifice that ensured forgiveness for all of humanity. We are redeemed, we are forgiven. But Jesus says to the woman, do not sin again. We can't just continue to sin because we know the end of the story, because we know that Christ died for us. Do not sin again, he says. We don't know if the woman in the story does sin again. We don't hear what happens to her. I can say with a sense of surety that she probably did, because she's human. We probably will, because we're human. But we try. We must always try. Try to be faithful to Christ by living good lives. Try to turn away from sin. To turn away from temptation and wrongdoing. To go away from the bad and to be better and good. Because that's what Jesus wants. As we move through the weeks of Lent, let us pray that we have the courage and the strength to turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ, this Lent and always. May it be so. Amen. So we remain seated or kneel as we come to the self-examination and confession. Let us now call to mind our sin and the infinite mercy of God. God the Father, have mercy on us. God the Son, have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Trinity of love, have mercy on us. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we do confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have breathed your Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. Lord, Lord, have mercy. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people. Lord, have mercy. Our anger at our own frustration, and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. Lord, have mercy. 
our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts, and our dishonesty in daily life and work. Lord, have mercy. Our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. Lord, have mercy. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord. For all false judgments, for our uncharitable faults towards our neighbours, and for our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation, that we may show your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us to all your saints with the joy of his resurrection. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to remember what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, I invite you to receive these ashes as a sign of the spirit of penitence with which we shall keep this season of Lent. Let us pray. God our Father, you create us from the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be for us a sign of our penitence and a symbol of our mortality. For it is by your grace alone that we receive eternal life. In Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen.
God our Father, the strength of all who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because in our weakness we can do nothing good without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in keeping your commandments we may please you, both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand if you're able for the peace. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. We remain standing now to sing our next hymn, which is our offertory hymn, and it's number 128, Jesus, Lover of My Soul.
risen Lord and Saviour, present among us with the wealth of your love, cleanse us from our sin, and give us the faith to offer our praise and grow in your grace. Amen. The Lord is here. Is Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For in these forty days, you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline, we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendour of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, that these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world. Rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people. Gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, and in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the whole world. 
Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be with
let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us both a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace that we may always most thankfully receive these his, his inestimable gifts and also daily endeavour to follow the, mo- the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God of our pilgrimage, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We remain seated just for a few notices. Um, the first notice is just to say thank you very much, everyone. This is my first service at St Andrew's, so it's always di- different in any church, no matter how many communions you've done. I've never had that number of different um, cups and plates to deal with. <laughs> so thank you for bearing with me, and thank you very much, Hannah, for guiding me through and pointing me in the right direction. <laughs> it's nice to be here. Um, and just thinking about Hannah, um, it, we, when Hannah and I were deciding who was doing what before the service today, um, Hannah said, I'll do the notice. And I said, well, I think the main notice is about your leaving on Sunday, so perhaps you shouldn't really talk about that too much. But yes, it's Hannah's final Sunday this Sunday, um, she's taking the 10 o'clock service, so do come along to that. And then between 2.30 and 4.30, there's a gathering at St Andrew's School, which I'm sure you're all aware of, but just to reiterate that open invitation for everyone um, to come along to that and say goodbye and thank you as for the next exciting chapter of her life. Are there any other notices, just in case? So we can now stand if we're able to sing our final hymn, which is hymn number 135, Take Up Thy Cross. So let's stand to sing.
Spirit, give to you a contrite heart. Amen. May Christ, who bore our sins in his body on the tree, heal you by his wounds. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, who leads us into all truth, speak to you words of pardon and peace. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you and all those you love and care for, now and always. Amen. Go in peace, to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>